Hey guys, it's Ms. Strahan here. I'm doing our last section of notes, which is on biological reactions. It's a little bit um, of chemistry as well as also kind of like a prequel to our next unit that'll get us prepared um, for that. So first off, just a definition that you'll want to be able to take with you from here on out is what an organic compound is as far as how it works in biology. So you might know the term organic um, when it comes to our food, and that usually just means, you know, the food doesn't have pesticides on it when it's grown, and it hasn't been, you know, GMO'd, and pretty much it just means like supernatural. Um, that's great in our agriculture field, but as far as biology and science goes, organic compounds are just compounds that contain carbon. But we use these compounds, remember carbon is kind of like our basis for life, so we also will just call organic things anything that's living, which means anything that is living or was once living and is full of these carbon-based molecules, we'd consider that organic as far as um, biology goes. So that means even you and I are organic. So macromolecules are these large molecules. That prefix macro means large. So kind of think like micro means small, like a microscope. Um, but macro means large. And so these large molecules are also known as our biomolecules. And these they're these big bio molecules in our body that make us up. So a great example would be protein or DNA. Um, and so you'll kind of hear us say biomolecules and macromolecules. They're sometimes interchangeable, but not always. We have biomolecules that are really small um, too, and we have these building blocks of our biomolecules that are not going to be big until they're put together into macromolecules. So let's kind of talk about these macromolecules and the components of them. So Oftentimes in our carbohydrates and our proteins um, and our DNA, we have these smaller units that are repeated over and over and over. Um, and these small units, they're known as a monomer. So let's talk about a prefix again. That prefix mono means one. So you can think of a monorail or a monocle. That'd be like, you know, one eyeglass. So mono means one and a monomer is just one unit. So you can look at this picture here and each hexagon is representing one unit. It's a monomer, but they start to be bonded together. That's where we get into our chemistry. We're going to have a chemical reaction that occurs and we're going to bond these together. And as more and more get bonded together with those strong covalent bonds, remember they're going to be really strong, we get a polymer. Now poly means many, like a polygon is a many sided shape. So a polymer is just going to be one of those long molecules that contains many monomers bonded together. The last thing I want to talk about are chemical reactions. This is another um, kind of general concept that I want you guys to take through with you the rest of the year and the next year into future science classes. So chemical reactions are just what change substances into different ones. And this happens in two ways. They can either break bonds and put, pull things apart or they can form bonds and put things back together. So think about when you eat food. If you eat some sort of protein, that's like a big piece of protein and your body's going to break it down first. It's gonna break it down into really, really small parts like those monomers. Then it's gonna send those all around your body and it's gonna use those to build up and create chemical bonds in your muscles and other parts and other tissues of your body. Um, so that's kind of a way to think about how chemical reactions happen in both ways. They build up and they break down. Now looking at this image here, um, we have reactants and then we have an arrow and we have products. So reactants are just the things you start with and then products are the things that you end with and we have an arrow in between and an arrow in chemistry is gonna signify that some sort of reaction is occurring. And this is gonna be important when we get to our photosynthesis and cellular respiration section because we're gonna talk about the equation then. But just know that the reactants are what we start with. They're gonna react together and the products products are produced. And that's it for the notes. They're really short today, guys. Have a good one.